you could get the last question on the test wrong. That doesn't mean you failed. <laughs> I still passed the test. I don't no, know. No, bro. This I was, don't know. This was the test. If, if you, 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 you passed, passed, you passed, passed all those quizzes. Quizzes. You did your homework. 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 You did your Listen, oh, of course, man. I wish I would have picked the Wolves. Yeah. Uh, talk, talking to even Jessica about it, uh, I, I told her, you know what? What I, was her I, thoughts on the series? I'm curious. Do you think the Suns were going to win? Before or after? Before. Before and after. Like going in, what she think? Well, listen, she hasn't trusted the Suns all year. I know that. Uh, after that. the series, she's been distra- she, she's been sad about it that the Suns lost. But, you know, I was, I've been the one to tell her, like, hey, listen, you know, it's not like you didn't see this coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, she was more pessimistic about the Suns than I was. Mm. I was a person saying, hey, listen, uh, they can get it th- done. There might there might be something. <laughs> there might be something here. Listen, it was it was a hard decision for me. I hated that this was the first round matchup because against anybody else I would I was picking the Wolves for sure. But um anybody Dallas? else interest that's even Dallas I, I picked the Wolves. And I know it's easy even to OKC. say now uh, OKC you're the new guy I think block. I think that could be a West Conference finals matchup and here's the thing we don't I don't have think to ask the Clippers. We know what you're doing. Off of the first round, obviously, I picked the Suns. Not my best moment. I wish I could take it back. I can't. It is what it is. Wolves fans, I know, still got love for me because I got love for them. It's, it's a mutual feeling. Mm-hmm. Number two, I think what the Wolves proved in this series is what's most important of them all. This team is the championship team. I agree. It, it's a team that can legitimately go to the finals and not only go, but they can win the NBA championship. That's how good this team is. That's how good their defense is. I agree. Their offense, the fact that it took a leap... Granted, against a weaker defense, the fact that it took a leap and was much better in the playoffs is now giving you more optimism that, hey, if we could play offense at a high level, we could be anybody. Because the the physicality this team plays with, the competitiveness, the toughness, it was magnified because of the lack thereof that the Suns had. But at the same time, this is a team that has that ferociousness. They have a player in Anthony Edwards who is a true superstar. He is. And he is one of those guys that everybody collectively has realized he is a special, rare, and unique type of player. And the pieces around him, it fits so perfectly. Carl Anthony Towns, one of the more underrated players for in sure. the league. He's had to adapt from different roles for years in Minnesota. He gets uh, he gets Anthony Edwards as a counterpart he does not push back once on who the guy is. Nope. He gives it to Ant-Man. And what helps is that Ant-Man is not arrogant. He's not arrogant about it. Because even with everybody collectively knowing Ant is the guy, Ant will point to every one of his teammates and say, Great guy. it's actually him. Great guy. It's him. It's him. Cat's our best player. Rudy, if he plays like that, we won't lose. Tough shit to get you goosebumps, if, honestly. If, yo. Na- He's if, really like that. If Nas team. Reed and Alexander Walker do their jobs off the bench, nobody can beat us. He gives credit to everybody on a team in a way that young players typically do not do. He's an extrovert. He's eccentric. And he has changed Minnesota's franchise. And Timberwolves fans got to be lucky that they got a player like that. Rudy Gobert shifting the narrative from him from Utah to Minnesota. There's a lot of things to like about this Minnesota team because it's a lot of guys that have had narratives around them that have broken those stigmas. And this team is most well-equipped to beat Denver. I still think Denver beats the Lakers, but Jamal Murray has not played well in this series. Not shot well. And banged up. And banged up. Jaden, Ant-Man, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, being able to be aggressive against Jamal Murray. Rudy Gobert can guard Aaron Gordon, and you can have Cat, a bigger body, on Jokic, and you can have help on that side. The Nuggets shooting against the Lakers is not being good. KCP is not shot well. Uh, everybody else is not shot well off outside the, of MPJ. Off the catch and shoot outside of MPJ and Jokic, they're shooting 10%. Last year, the Timberwolves and Nuggets series could have went to six had Ant-Man hit a game winner. Now they got Jaden and Nas Reed. They didn't have those two players last year. This is a team that very well, they could upset the, the Nuggets in the first round. And the most important thing to take away from the series is that, you know, not only did they win, but they dominated in a way that they showed everybody Oh, wait, this team has the potential to really win a championship this year. And I think that's the most important takeaway. It's very reminiscent, I think, of the 2022 Celtics. I think you have this young team going up against, um, 
Well, I guess there's a big three, but mostly, yes, Kevin Durant, this elite jump shooting team, KD Swept. and Kyrie, and the other side, of course, you got Bradley Beal, Booker, and Kevin Durant, a team that's predicated on defense, the best defense in both circumstances, especially when you just talk about the second half of the season for Boston in 2022. You have these young, up-and-coming, one superstar with Tatum and Anthony Edwards. There's a lot of similarities between these two teams, and I think the number one thing that's going for Minnesota, they have a lot going for them, but they have this swagger and confidence not that it's unwarranted because they a thousand percent should feel that way but a type of confidence that you need when you're going up against the Denver Nuggets a type of confidence you need when you're going up against the defending champion you're going up against the best player in the world going up against the best duo in the league this is the type of confidence you need to bring into a series I'm not saying the Lakers didn't have that but it felt like after game one game two and it's like oh shit it's the same thing again even though they won game four it's like I don't know if they had that same sort of bravado that Ant and the Timberwolves are going to be bringing to this upcoming series. And these first four games that we saw against the, the Phoenix Suns, it's a, really a 180 of what we saw in the regular season, at least offensively. They're the only team to sweep in round one. Best offensive rating in the playoffs, as we mentioned. Offensive rating of 123, by the way, which would have been number one if you look at just all the teams in the regular <coughs> season. Highest points per game out of all of these teams. Second highest or second best net rating. Second highest true shooting percentage. Ant-Man... Him and Jokic, in terms of best playoff performer so far, probably Jokic number one, but Ant is number two right there with him. You have three games of 30-plus points. AD Shout out to AD. Been, Shout out to AD, but great. unfortunately down 3-1. Uh, three yeah. games of 30-plus <laughs> points from Ant. You have Carl Anthony saying. Towns averaging 19, over 50% from the field, over 50% from three. Everything's clicking offensively, at least for um, what we've seen so far. The only thing I'm still slightly concerned about is Outside of game four, and that kind of got away at the end, we haven't really seen them in clutch moments, I think, in this series. I feel like especially in the third quarters and early in the fourth, we've seen Minnesota kind of take away life from the Suns, especially I think that was that game two or game three game where they outscored them like 26 to 10 and it was 51-50 at halftime. And then defensively, we know how great they can be. Devin Booker was great game four, shouts him, but games one through three, he averaged 20 a game. You're talking about six for 16, five for 16, six of 13, had six turnovers in game two as well. Katie was great games one and four, but two and three, he was held to under 45% shooting in both of those games. And Bradley Beal, I know the numbers might look okay, or at least compared to these other guys, but... If you, if you take into account kind of the issues he had with Frank Vogel at the end of this past game or game three or four, I forgot which one, where he was brushing off the hand when he's trying to dap him up, where you have him kind of joking after he got swept because he said, well, I'd be damned. He got swept and he said, I'm damned. It was a bit of a disaster, I think, to end the season for the Phoenix Suns, and we'll get more in-depth into them later. Then lastly, of course, you got to shout, shout out Jane McDaniels, who held Devin Booker and Bradley Beal to 23.1% shooting this series. That's crazy. I know we get on his ass for offense. We get on his ass for shooting. If he's going to be the best perimeter defender in the league, the $27 million I think is worth it. If he's going to give you this level of high leverage defense against some of the best players on the planet, and you could still get a game or two where he's going to hit around 40% of his threes, where he could even have a game where he's one of your best shooters... To me, that's worth the $25 plus million dollar investment as well as the upside he has because he's still, what, 23 years old or something. It shows you the so, Jalen Brown scoring upside. Yeah, a lot, you know? lot of go to the Jalen Brown upside, but the defensive upside is is far and away better than Jalen Brown's because Jalen Brown's a great defender of his own right. Jalen McDaniels is best in the league type of defense. But, I mean, this is, if you're the Timberwolves, and I tweeted this out, this is the toughest matchup for Denver, I think. From a matchup perspective, well, you could put Jaden on him. When you could put, or excuse me, when you could put Jaden on Jamal Murray, you could put Ant on Jamal Murray, as you mentioned. You have different looks to throw at Joker, even though I know Joker is going to get his. Oh, yeah. From a just matchup schematic standpoint, plus the confidence that the Wolves are going into, this is going to be, I think, the toughest matchup for the Nuggets. I was going to say, we saw in, in two games that when you have a, a dominant pressing big down low on the scoring side, well, the one that I can compare it to is Anthony Davis, who's been balling out against the Nuggets. He went in the two games that he played against Minnesota this season. He's averaging over 30. Nikola Jokic, obviously the best player in basketball. You can argue has been the best player in these playoffs still. He's going to have his way against Minnesota, but you look at the matchups, and what, what you said perfectly is that if Jamal Murray's not at 100%, if Jamal Murray's going to continue to struggle the way that he has against the Los Angeles Lakers... You can definitely look at Minnesota and say, this is a team that can upset the Denver Nuggets. I would go in, and if that is the matchup, I say if, because you know I'm always going to be hopeful for my Lake show. But of course, oh, oh for 152. I would still take the Nuggets off what they've shown me just in the regular season, in this postseason. Of course, last year's run, 
But the fact that Jamal Murray has been playing as shaky as he has, but MPJ has upped his level of play once again, because MPJ has most definitely been the second best player on the Denver Nuggets. You have Aaron Gordon still balling the hell out. The Denver Nuggets starting five is the best starting five in basketball. But when you see when they could just go ahead and you have Nikhil Alexander-Walker now suddenly hitting shots, his great defense. You have Nas Reed off the bench also. It, it, it becomes a point where does the amount of matchups that we can throw at their second best offensive scoring player, can that be enough? And if you get past the Denver Nuggets... There's no reason to think that you can't win the whole thing. Because if you can get out the West, hell, you can win the whole thing, no doubt about it. But in this matchup, I mean, I think we saw a lot. Riv, you've been very vocal about this. Rudy Gobert and how versatile and how impactful he is for Minnesota's defense. We've seen it all season long, obviously, as he is going to win Defensive Player of the Year. The Minnesota Timberwolves were the number one defense in basketball. But again, his ability to even step out a little bit, play on the perimeter if need be. His ability to pass out also and kick out to the open guy from three. Everything about this defense hit at 100% against the Phoenix Suns. And Game 4, obviously, back against the wall. You're going to see D-Book. You're going to see Kevin Durant at their best. And they still took their best punch on the road and was still able to close out. Shows you how special Anthony Edwards is with a 40 ball of his own, an efficient 40 ball. Cat having the mind, and, and you see the, the, the chemistry between the two of them and the presser after, where Ant's telling it how it is. You stay out of foul trouble, we win this game. There's no answer for you. There was never an answer for Carl Anthony Towns. That was the truth. And when you saw that, that he was able to stay on the court, he obviously dominated in that fashion. It's going to be a great series versus Denver if that is the matchup. But again, with the way that Murray's playing, you can 100% make the case Minnesota can go to the NBA Finals. You know, I was reading this question, and it um, gave me a lot of thought. Definitely gave me a lot of thought. Because I, as I was talking to the Dells a couple days ago, same way I feel about the Clippers in Dallas is how I feel about Phoenix. You know, I don't think I I, don't, I never thought Phoenix was that good. I agree. You know, I always thought they were just this team with a lot of star power, but the issues were really glaring, and there was just no way they'll be able to flip that switch at any point. You know, and I think there's a big difference between elite defenses in the regular season and a playoff defense. I think Minnesota is that like. They're a playoff defense. They have multiple guys that can defend long, lengthy, good wingspan. They have a, a, a anchor down low. They have guys that are connected. They switch one through five. They can guard one through five. You know, so I think this is a playoff defense. For me to say, yeah, I would have. I feel like I would have to believe a little bit more in Phoenix. I don't believe in Phoenix at all, so I don't think this was the test that kind of puts them there. I think the test is coming up. It will be Denver in the second round. And I think with this defense, the way they can play, one through five, you know, you mentioned that Jamal Murray has not been, like, outside his, like, he, he outside his fourth quarters in that game when he hit the game winner, you know, he hasn't been great. He hasn't no. been the best. You mentioned the MPJ has been on the heater, though. So if you Nuts. can get those three on five, Jamal can kick it up. It's, it's going to be tough to beat Denver, but... The Timberwolves, they do have Jaden McDaniels. They have Nick Alexander-Walker, Ant Edwards. You know, they have Cat. They have Nas. They have a lot of good defenders, g great defenders, I want to say. So it would definitely be a tough matchup. For me, it's offensively, how would they be able to keep up? Because we mentioned it. They were pretty great against Phoenix, but I think Phoenix defensively is just not all there. Like Kevin Durant is a great defender individually, but I don't think he's a, he's a riser in that department for a defense like this. You know, even though... In Golden State, it was Draymond and then him. So I think with Phoenix, it kind of gives you not an illusion. I don't want to be disrespectful, but it kind of gives you like a like that feeling like, all right, they, they were great offensively, but it was against Phoenix. Denver provides a little bit of a different challenge. But I think this series coming up, I think this is the road test because I think going up against the defending champions, going up against the best player in the world, going up against an offense that's a little bit more difficult, an offense that's a little bit more pace and space. You know, they move the ball well. They can run you in multiple pick and rolls. They have a counter for everything you can do. I think that kind of stretches your defense and that makes it a lot harder to figure out rotations, figure out who's guarding who. So I think this right here, like I think Phoenix was the perfect defensive matchup for where they can just sit you got Rudy Gobert. He was great in switches. You know, you have guys coming off the bench that can lock in. I think this one right here would really prove it because, you know, realistically, if they come out of this series, you can beat anybody. But for me, like, I'm going a, I'm to a stamp in early, early. I think OKC and Minnesota will see each other in the WCF. It will be the battle of the young teams. I think SGA versus Ant-Man <coughs> is going to be a, one of them battles, you know. And I think both of these teams are going to go there. I think that's a great pick. Um yeah, so that, that's a pick. That's a pick. You're riding with Minnesota. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I can put the, I don't like them, but I can put the bias aside.